Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. David, listen. Uh, huh? David, listen to the birds. Aren't they wonderful? David, you old sleepyhead. Here we have the most beautiful alarm clock in the world. You don't even listen to it. Uh, what time is it? It's morning. You mean it's after midnight? Good night. It's really morning. Listen to the birds. They're singing. They want you to get up, and so do I. Only not much. You mean if I open my eyes, I'll see light? You'll see sunlight. It's streaming in the room, David. Then I won't open them. Ever since we moved to the country, you've been sleepy. Shh. I'm asleep. Oh, I just love to lie here all day listening to the birds singing to us. I feel like Adam and Eve. <laughs> Where's the snake? <laughs> I feel like Adam and Eve before the snake came. Oh, it's wonderful living in the country, so quiet and peaceful. It was quiet and peaceful until someone I know started talking. Now, shh, I'm going back to sleep. Then I'm going to listen to the birds. What kind of birds are they, do you know? I was just going to ask you that. Well, they're parrots and nightingales and ostriches and oh, pheasants. That? <laughs> and doves, don't forget the doves. They must be doves because it's so peaceful. David, what was that? Uh, one of your doves just fell out of the tree. <laughs> I wonder what he fell on. I never heard such a noise. <laughs> I don't like to say this, but your dove is falling upstairs. David, do you think there are ghosts in the house? Ghosts with hobnailed boots. Coming this way. I'm going back to sleep. David, what is it? Uh, it's the most dangerous of all ghosts. It's the carpenter. He came right in this room. Don't you think we ought to tell him we're here? I'm not sure I know how. And I'll tell him. <clears throat> Excuse me, sir. I mean, uh, we're still in bed. Oh, hiya, folks. Just act as though I'm not here. Uh, Got to finish this wiring job into the annex before we put up the lab. Hey, he's just going to stay here. Wonderful. Now, I really don't have to get up. To stay in bed all day long. Darling, it's so nice and peaceful. Now, shh, I'm asleep. Hey, Billy, push that wire up to the wall. I'm not getting you. Can't hear you. Push that wire up, Billy. You got me? David, don't you have to go to the office today? Quiet, quiet. I'm trying to hear the birds. Now I know what kind of birds they are. They're woodpeckers. They're wide-throated nail drivers. That's what they are. <laughs> okay, Billy, I'm getting you now. Claudia, why didn't you tell me? I, I've got to get up. You can't just go and leave me here. There must be some way we can get him to go hammer somewhere else for a while. Preferably on Billy's head. Uh, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> excuse me. How's that, mister? I wonder if you could go downstairs for a moment while Mrs. Norton and I get out of bed and get dressed. Well, anything you say, mister. Heh, you're paying for it. All I know is I was told to get here an hour ahead of my regular starting time so we could get this job finished right away quick. Hey, Mitch. Hold it, Billy. What are you doing up there, going back to sleep? Hold your horses, Billy. I'm talking to the owner. All of this energy is a little frightening. <laughs> Too bad you fellas didn't hurry a week ago. You might have been through today. Well, we're doing our best, mister. So long. I'll be right outside. Oh, that's a lot better. Mm. I can hear the birds singing again. Yes. Yeah. It certainly is nice and peaceful in the country. Mm. David, what was that? I don't know, but I'm going to find out in a hurry. M meet you downstairs. Don't forget you have to catch a train. Who cares about the train? I think half the house just fell in. Mr. Mitchell! Mr. Mitchell! What was that? What was what? That crash. What crash? Just now, didn't you hear it? Oh, oh, that. They just deliver a lot of siding in Millwork. Is that all? Sounded like an earthquake. David, it's ten past seven. My train's in 35 minutes. I'll get breakfast ready. You get dressed. Hello, goodbye. Hello, goodbye. Hello, goodbye. 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 My, you got dressed quickly. Wonderful what the country can do for a woman. <laughs> 
David, listen. Hey, can you hear the birds again? Hey, Mitch, do you get me? I get you, Billy. It's 7.20. You got my breakfast it's ready? on the stove. Well, take it off. We'll need at least oh. 20 minutes to get to the station. That only gives us uh, five minutes to eat. Well, it's not ready well, yet. Well, hurry up, hurry up. Doesn't it know I'm waiting? I'm the one who's waiting, and don't rush me. Say it took you a very long time to get dressed. Well, let me ask you something. Did you ever shave with cold water? Didn't you get any hot water either? I thought there'd be some by the time you got there. Yeah? Well, there wasn't. I repeat, did you ever shave with cold water? Is it better? Better? Let me tell you, it's like pulling out each hair with a tweezer. Oh. And a rusty tweezer at that. You don't look as though anything very terrible happened. My face feels like it's been... Caught in a subway door. Subways, crowds, noises. Aren't you glad we're in the country? Mm, delighted. Delighted. It's so peaceful. Mm. What? No crash? <laughs> Every time I say that, there's been a crash. <laughs> there, there, that's better. I wonder what it was this time. Oh, just a couple of carpenters chopping down a tree, probably. <laughs> Isn't that coffee perking yet? And tell me, why is it so cold in this kitchen? I don't know why it's so cold. That's your department. My department. My department is in full retreat. What's uh, what's going on in your department? The coffee is not perking yet. Uh, let me see. Uh, no wonder. A little item here. You forgot to turn the stove on. That electric burner is as cold as the water I shaved with. I, I did so turn it on. See? Look. Uh, let me look down here. It isn't underneath, darling. It's look. up here. Yeah, there's something not quite all right here. Something? Yeah. Everything. And look, you have 23 minutes left to catch your train. Hey, Mitch! Maybe he brought some coffee in a thermos bottle. I'm not reduced to pinching from other men's lunch boxes. Thank you. Hey, Mitch! Okay, mister. What's all the noise about? Uh, I just wondered if I could bother you for a minute. This, uh, this stove isn't working. Ah, you're very right. It isn't working. Billy and me are installing some wiring. You think we're trying to knock ourselves out? What's he mean, David? He means, uh, he turned the current off. Can he do that? Obviously. Hey, you have 22 minutes to catch your train. 22 minutes? I'll... I'll take a glass of milk, then. Want some toast? Where are you going to make the toast? Under the cold water? Oh, dear. I guess you really do need electricity in the country, too. Mm, especially in the country, where everything is so nice and peaceful. Ah! Uh, there goes the rest of the siding. There goes the rest of my appetite. Come on, Claudia. We've All got right. 21 minutes to get to the station. Maybe I can get a cup of coffee on the oh, train. where'd I leave my coat? It's in the closet under the stairs. So long, Mitch. So long. I'll see you tomorrow morning. Uh, so long, mister. Oh, uh... I hope you like it in the country. The car doesn't start. It's a little cold, that's all. Maybe the car didn't get its breakfast coffee either. <clears throat> Can't oh. you use the choke or something? What do you think I'm using? Oh, is that the choke? Mm, yes, that's the choke. Huh. A fat lot of good it is, too. Maybe I'll have to get out and push. We only have, have 18 minutes, and you said it takes 20 to the station. Oh, I just got an idea. Maybe the train didn't get started either. Oh, let the motor rest for a moment, then try it again. Thanks. Thanks for the professional opinion. That is what I'm here for, to give professional opinions. Call on me at any time. Oh, thanks. Thanks very much. I'll, I'll do that. Do. Now, let's try it again. Ready? Get set. Go. David is going. I told you to let it rest. Yeah, little I told you so. Now, let's see. Now we've got only 17 minutes left. <gasps> and it takes 20. Well, let's back out of here. Now what? That truck look is turning in our driveway. Well, that's just great. We'll either have to go over it or under it, or he'll have to back <laughs> up. Did he hear you? Hey! Hey, you in that truck! Back up! He wants you to back up. Me? That, that isn't going to do any good. Hey! Hey, you! Stop. 
Back up. Back up, back up. He heard you. He's backing up. Well, he's awfully slow about it. What does he think this is, anyhow? Doesn't anybody around here realize that people have to go to the work in the morning? Well, that's what they're all doing, isn't it, going to work? Hey, whose side are you on? Oh, look, darling. Isn't River Road beautiful early in the morning? I think early in the morning is the best time of all. Mm-hmm. There's still a mist on those fields down by the brook. Looks nice, doesn't it? Everything looks so quiet, half asleep. And still, you know, there's all kinds of life inside it, don't you? I know the carpenters and the plumbers aren't asleep, if that's what you mean. No, I mean the fields. They look as if they were still asleep. But if you stopped and listened, you could hear the birds and the frogs. Aren't they full of rabbits and cows, though? Well, teeming with them. I like the country. I like it better with warm water and coffee for breakfast, but I like it, too. Oh, the country doesn't care if you notice it or not. It isn't like New York, where everything tries to make you stare at it. Here, everything is just there. It leaves the rest up to you. I think that's a nice way to be, don't you? I think you're a nice way to be, darling. David, we've only got 14 minutes to make your train. Well, we won't be able to make any time when we get near the station. Too many cars. Look at all the people. Where they all come from? From the same kind of places we came from. David, it's the first time I've really realized you're leaving. But only for the day. It's just the same as my going to the office in New York. No, but you're getting on a train, so it isn't the same thing at now, all. Now, don't be lonesome, darling. It's just for today. Remember, I'm bringing Mom up tonight. Please don't miss your train tonight. I'm going to miss my train this morning if we just sit here talking. We're almost only, only a block from the station. We may never get any near. Look at all the other commuters. <gasps> there comes the train. Oh. I'll have to run. Goodbye, darling. Goodbye. Now, don't do anything foolish. No. And you'd better get some breakfast before you go home. Oh, David, goodbye. I'm glad we had so much trouble this morning. Glad? Well, this way, all I had time to think about was getting you to the station on time. No time to think how much I hate to watch you go away. Uh, goodbye, good, darling. Goodbye, darling. Goodbye. So long, Mrs. Knox. So long. <laughs> Having a club meeting or an afternoon bridge? Wondering what to serve? If you want to keep the bills down and the company happy, just order a case of Coca-Cola. See that there's plenty on ice and what goes with it doesn't much matter. Moreover, there'll be precious little bother for you. And it goes without saying that everyone enjoys a party more when the hostess doesn't have to exert herself. Say, Mr. King, do you happen to know if Mr. Norton made his train? Well, he made it all right, but by the proverbial skin of his teeth. Oh, good, good. Well, we'll get finished with their house as soon as we can, and then the Nortons really will start to enjoy living in the country. Well, I think they will like it, in spite of you and Billy, Mitch. Say, how come they move up to Eastbrook? Do they know many folks around here? I don't think they do know any Eastbrookers, and that's one thing that Claudia's going to start working on tomorrow. Well, I hope she likes us. Think she will. She's going to meet some of her neighbors tomorrow. It'll be a little unconventional, but she'll meet them. Wait and see how. I'll be around. So long, Mr. King. So long. And as I was about to say, every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. These broadcasts are adapted for record and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.